please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. On the show today, we check out the 2018 Harley Davidson motorcycles from the Softail family. A quick look at the Audi A5 Sportback, Auto Selector with Shumi, and the latest news from this week. Hi, welcome to Overdrive. You're watching the show with me, so we need that. And here's a look. Welcome to Spain. These are two of the many motorcycles we're going to be riding on the show today. They're the 2018 Softails from Harley Davidson. They're lighter, they have more corning clearance, they have more power. It's going to be a good day. But first, the big news is that the old Harley-Davidson Dyna line has been absorbed into the Softail family for the 2018 model year. Harley-Davidson says the Dynas, known to be light and leaf, were also always getting muddled in the customers' heads with the Softails. And that's what prompted the, um, let's call it a merger. There are eight Softails in all for 2018 and three are here today. What's missing is the 2018 Fat Boy 107, which will come to India along with the larger engine 115th anniversary version. We did also ride the new breakout. You can see the story on overdrive.in, but it isn't coming to India because the last one wasn't too popular. All the motorcycles are technically all new this year and it's not just the cosmetics. There are updates to literally everything and I cannot think of a better place to start than the sportiest soft tail of them all for 2018, the ridiculously good looking Fat Bob. Now the Fat Bob is the new big daddy of sporty Harleys, but its behavior, we can't discuss that until we talk about how it looks. And it looks the business. Daryl Dixon wouldn't have given an arm and a leg for this. The Fat Bob is fat to be sure from its balloon tires to its stocky build and it starts with that headlight. So that's almost as good looking as someone I know but jokes aside the point is that all the 2018 soft tails get LED headlights and my favorite is this one from uh, the Fat Bob. I don't even really know how to describe it but it's basically two rows of LEDs. They're supposedly very bright. We've only been riding during the day but when you see that in your rear view mirror you want to get out of the way. And you'd be right to get out of the way because it's got the moves and a stance that encourages the rider to use them. You sit behind the thick handlebar that's more or less a straight bar which gives you great leverage and you get to use that. The all new 2018 frame is stiffer and lighter and the fat bob gets a 28 degree rake, the sharpest soft tail of them all. It also gets the only set of cartridge upside down telescopic forks from Showa in the range this year. If you muscle the motorcycle around, and you must, you will discover a neutral handling responsive package. If I'm honest with you, I didn't really like the last street bob at all. Every opportunity I got to ride it, I somehow managed to avoid it. I'm just a terrible journalist but this time I'm really surprised with this because it does look like this and it's really a big machine but a it's fun b it actually handles it's not the lightest machine you'll ever ride but if you put a little bit of force into it it handles accurately going from full lean on the left to full lean on the right you'd be surprised at how accurately and easily it does it and honestly I wasn't expecting to be so enamored of it but I can't wait to test this in India and where the Fat Bob was unexpectedly feelsome as well as interesting, the Heritage Classic, I thought, would be more predictable. Because we know that the old one was a big, comfy teddy bear. And like the other soft tails, it's got the new 1750cc Milwaukee 8 engine this year as well. That's the new Milwaukee 8, which we met for the first time on the touring range last year when it was launched in Seattle. We've road tested motorcycles like the Road Glide in India and we loved it. This one though is slightly different because the state of tune is individual to the soft tail and now it's got dual counterbalancers which is a much smoother engine overall and that means Harley Davidson mounts this engine stiff to the frame. It's part of the frame and it gives it 34% more stiffness. And the first time you tip any of the 2018 soft tails into a corner, you immediately know that that makes a difference. 
That's right. The new engine adds to the feel and charm of the motorcycle and hardly take that one step forward by making the Heritage the most touring friendly motorcycle of the lot. How? The rear monoshock is the extra long one shared with the fat bob to permit pillions as well as full bags to be taken care of via preload adjustment and the extra wheel travel. They've also made the Heritage screen removable, the hard bags are now lockable and weather resistant and this is the sole family member that gets cruise control. So now you're thinking this is a slightly calm down, highway chill out kind of machine, right? If you've hung out on Facebook, and please don't tell me you haven't, we all know you have hung out on Facebook, you've seen that video where there's this old guy with a walking stick in a shopping bag and he's sort of doddering along and then the music kicks up and it's some hardcore trance track or something and he just flings the walking stick one side, the shopping bag goes the other way and he's like doing the jitterbug and yeah, it's got like a million likes or something. The Heritage Soft is sort of like that because it looks like this, it looks like a very old motorcycle but believe me, the kind of things that this is able to do is stunning. In the mountain roads today, you can corner it as hard as you like, there's no effort involved because the handlebar gives you a lot of leverage, it falls to lean angles fast. That, uh, the, the footboard, it's scraped, it's literally scraped away. It's amazing and if you think something that looks like this shouldn't go up a mountain road, try. If the fat pop's alarmingly aggressive posture and demeanor and the Heritage Classic's cornering chops and sweet manners from his great huge things, wait for the 2018 Street Bob. That's the real Thriller Minute ride. The Street Bob is one of my favourite Harleys because it's always been a light, sweet handling machine and this one's even better. The reason why it's so popular is because if you look at the Softail family, that's the cheapest motorcycle in the family and in my head, this is what a Harley Davidson is supposed to look like, this is what a Harley is supposed to feel like. Just as with the Fat Bob and the Heritage Classic, the Street Bob is also smoother and lighter for 2018, courtesy the new frame. But on this one, the weight loss is hard to tell until you start turning the volume up to 11. Because the Street Bob was already a light feeling fleet footed Harley. Not an apex predator in the Japanese port naked manner, but certainly a bird of prey as American cruisers go. And it hasn't lost that zing. The Street Bob is easy to understand and operate and whether you ride at 30 km per hour so everyone can see you or hustle through the corners, the Sweet Bob aces the task. Indeed, Harley point out that the Street Bob is the most affordable soft tail as well as the most likely candidate for being the first big twin Harley for most customers. And on the flip side, the Street Bob is also a bit of a whiz at taking on all kinds of modifications from performance to radical designs in its stride. This is a truly special little Harley. There is just so much to love about the Street Bob because it's just such a natural motorcycle to ride. I know I've already said this but I can't, I can't tell you just how easy it is for me to recommend to somebody who's never ridden a Harley Davidson before, or never experienced a Harley Davidson before, what should I ride? You should ride a Street Bob. Because it puts all the basic pieces in place and Harley Davidson has told us again and again that the Street Bob is a popular model because it begins like this and then uh, people accessorize, they customize it in the handlebars, foot pegs and they get a completely different experience out of it. But the essence of Harley Davidson is here. In a sense, the 2018 Harleys are a good bunch. The Milwaukee Motorhead's done good even. They've turned the Fat Bob into the most radical design from America I've seen while ensuring that its show is matched by the go. The Heritage Classic keeps its feel firmly rooted in nostalgia while adding practicality, ride quality as well as genuine highway equipment. And the Street Bob is just wonderful to ride. A combination of low effort, it's easy to get along with and still so happy to dance a jig through the corners when you want to. This represents a solid new lineup for the company that intends to launch a hundred new Harley Davidsons in the next 10 years. So as we wrap up the show, I must apologize that the Fat Boy and the 115th anniversary Fat Boy couldn't be here. Uh, they're in Los Angeles, uh, evidently the T1000's been spotted again, the world's in peril and all of those kind of things. But those two and these three are the new soft tails that are coming to India. I don't think you're going to get any other new Harley Davidsons in this calendar year in India. 
but that's five good ones. Joined us on our auto selector segment where we answer all of your motoring queries. We are joined in by our overdrive expert Shumi. Hi Shumi, our first question this week comes in from Amrit Arora. He has a very straightforward question. He wants to know if Honda Cars has any plans to add an automatic variant to the WRV model and if so, can we expect a bigger 1.5 litre petrol engine? Amrit, I don't think you're going to get the automatic with the 1.5 litre engine in India and the reason for that is simple. Uh, the base car has a 1.2 litre engine and that's why it gets excise benefits being a sub 4 metre car. The 1.5 litre engine petrol will completely take that benefit away. It will become more expensive. Add the automatic on top of that, this becomes a really expensive car and I don't see Honda going there. So yes, you will get the 1.2 litre petrol with an automatic at some point. The 1.5 litre petrol though, I don't think it's coming to India. Well, our next question, Shumi, comes in from Gotham Manam. He writes in from Bangalore saying he wants to buy a diesel car and has a budget of 10 lakh rupees. Engine refinement, good handling, build quality, spacious seating for five. And of course, ground clearance are his requirements. He's interested in any crossover or a compact SUV. What do you think he should go in for, Shumi? In the crossover segment, the default right now is the Maruti Suzuki Brezza and we'll come to that as your safe option. You've got two good options that you can consider. One of them is the Tata Nexon. We've just finished testing it. It proved to be doing extremely well for itself in that class. Uh, read the comparison test on Overdrive. You will be very surprised at how good that car totally proves to be. The safe option for you is, of course, the Vitara Brezza. The Ford EcoSport is another good car in that segment, but there's a new one coming. So if the Ford EcoSport is the car you've been dreaming about, you might want to wait for the new one to come out. But the safe option is the Maruti, the Vitara Brezza. Well, every week on the show, we do urge you to drop us a few lines regarding any of the cars and bikes that you would like to buy or you would want to know about any upcoming models. Do drop us a line on helpdesk at overdrive.co.in. That is our email address. You can also send them to us via Facebook or Twitter. And we promise to answer them on the show for you. Now, it has been a very busy week. We've seen launches from the lowest to the highest uh, segment in the market. Let's check it out. Mahindra and Mahindra have launched the facelift of the KUV 100 NXT at 4.39 lakh rupees X showroom for the petrol and 5.39 lakh rupees X showroom for the diesel variant. With the 2017 Mahindra KUV 100 NXT, you get a 25mm long vehicle at 3700mm with other specifications remaining the same as the outgoing model. The refreshed exterior design gives the KUV a sportier look, but the interior has a more premium feel to it. The mid and top level models get a floating 7 inch touchscreen infotainment system with smartphone integration. The SUV continues to be powered by the same 1.2 litre petrol and diesel engines, but the new addition to the SUV is the micro hybrid start stop technology, which gives a 3 to 4 percent increase in fuel efficiency. Mahindra dealerships across India have already begun accepting bookings of the SUV, and it has already been spotted at some Mahindra dealerships. Volkswagen India has launched the 8th generation of the all new Passat at 29.99 lakh rupees ex showroom India. The new Volkswagen Passat gets a new 2 litre TDI motor that develops 177 PS of max power and 350 Newton meters of max torque. The motor is mated to a 6 speed DSG transmission, and while the car is now 2 millimeters shorter than the previous model, its wheelbase has gone up by 79 millimeters adding to more room in the cabin and boot. The car is also 80 kgs lighter than before. The interior sports a typically understated yet premium German design and what garners your attention at first is the new Napa leather seats and a panoramic sunroof. With 9 safety airbags as standard and a host of other much needed features, this new Passat is an interesting choice in the market. Moving on to the premium spectrum of the market, Porsche India launched the new 911 GT3 in India at 2.31 crore rupees. While it's not an entirely new car, it showcases a host of new features that makes the car faster and more capable than before. It gets a new 4-litre naturally aspirated flat 6 engine that comes mated to a PDK gearbox and is also available with an optional manual transmission. The car features a new Track Precision app that allows the driver to record and analyse detailed driving data on his smartphone. You can book the 911 GT3 at any Porsche centre across the country. Well, 
earlier this week, Abhay did catch up with the new MD of Harley Davidson India, Peter McKenzie, and we have that interview up on our YouTube channel. He does share plans about the 2018 range of Harley Davidson motorcycles. Now, Audi's plans for expanding its portfolio in India paved the way for the A5 lineup. Now, we sampled the leader of the pack, the A5 Sport Pack, just to get an initial impression of what's in store. Take a look. Sport bags or four door coupes, they're not to everybody's taste. There are many who still prefer the classic three box proportions of a classic sedan design. But if you ask me, the four door coupes, they look so much better, so much sportier than their classic counterparts. We have quite a few examples. We have the CLA, the CLS, we also have the Audi A7, which despite its age looks so beautiful and sporty even today. And now there's another good looker that joins the family. It is the Audi A5. And that is what I'm driving right now. Take a look at the A5 from any angle and it looks gorgeous. That is partly because it's not every day that you see a new age Audi being so full of curves and sweeping lines. Certainly not one that has four doors. To me, the prettiest angle to view the A5 from is at the back. The sportback body style gives it the coupe roofline that flows into the well-defined haunches. The prominent creases and the sharply cut taillights and headlights give the A5 its athletic stance. Though it is based on the A4, you won't mistake the A5 for a typical four-door sedan, even in a passing glance. Compared to the previous A5, which was brought to India in the Go Faster S5 guys, the new A5 not only looks sportier, but also previews what the future Audi sedans would look like. Getting in and out of the A5 Sportback isn't easy, as is the case with most coupe body styles. But once you sink into the seats, you realize that it is a typical Audi on the inside. Impeccable fit and finish, intuitive controls, and full of premium materials. I like the blackwood inserts, but I would have liked the cabin to be more flamboyant to match the exterior appeal. The cabin will remind you of the A4, but feels a tad bit less around space, especially at the back. The India spec model comes with an 8-inch infotainment system, but some of its features like the 755W Bang & Olufsen audio system or smartphone interfaces like Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are optional. The A5 gets the virtual cockpit as a standard fitment though. Upon launch, the A5 will only be available with one engine option for now. It will be the more popular 2.0-litre diesel. It's the same engine that powers the A4 as well, which means it puts out about 190 PS of power and about 400 Newton meters of torque. And despite its sensible approach, it still is quite a powerful, quite a punchy motor. It is one of the best 2.0-litre diesels in business, not only because of its figures, but also because of its refinement levels. It builds power pretty quickly, while a surge of torque hits you around the 2,500 rpm mark. It almost revs as quickly as a petrol motor, but the 4,500 rpm red line leaves you wanting for more. The A5 is based on VW's MLB platform, and the engine feeds power to the front wheels despite its longitudinal mounting. There is a bit of torque steer when you accelerate hard, but it is ironed out quite quickly. The 7-speed gearbox is predictable and will seldom make you use the paddle shifters. In the right conditions, the A5 diesel can go from standstill to 100 in 7.9 seconds. But if you would want something more punchier to go with the sportier bodywork of the A5, then you will have to opt for the S5, which gets you a 3-litre petrol unit which produces a lot more power and torque and some really good numbers. While you see the S5 in the footage here, we will review it at a later date when we have the right roads for it. But if a corner cover is what you are looking for in the A5 range, this is what you will want to drive. Globally, the A5 comes with optional adaptive dampers. My particular test car doesn't. However, on some of the broken sections that we encountered in Rajasthan, the suspension was quite silent, it, the ride quality was really good. But unfortunately, I've only been driving on arrow straight highways, so I can't really comment on how this vehicle handles around the twisties. So more on that with the road test. The higher profile tyres contribute to the firm but pliant ride of the A5. They grip pretty well too and inspire confidence despite the understeery nature of the front wheel drive configuration. The brakes on the A5, compared to what I remember from the A4 which had progressive brakes, this particular car at least has brakes that are biting a little too sharp. They have a little bit of an urgency when it comes to braking. 
they aren't as progressive as the A4. So out on the highway, at highway speeds, it's still fine, but in the city speeds, they feel a little too grabby for my liking. Overall, the A5 isn't a Ford or sports sedan, as its form would otherwise suggest, but has siblings in the range to take care of that aspect. The A5 Sportback to me is a quick highway operator with good road manners and practicality for long-distance touring. If you think that the practical A4 is a little boring with its straight lines and classic proportions, then the A5 could actually end up attracting you more. It borrows the kit and the mature drivetrain that actually makes the A4 a sensible buy. But at the same time, it wraps it all in a very nice and sporty bodywork, which also gives it its exclusivity. So if you ask me, I think the A5 is a damn good car. Well, the A5 virtually has no competition in the Indian market, but with its price and positioning, what it actually means is that the A4 will be its toughest competitor, followed by the Jaguar XE and the BMW 3 Series. Now with that, we've officially run out of time on this week's episode of Overdrive, but we'll see you next week during the festive season. Until then, have a great weekend.